so I decided to finally stop waiting for perfect conditions to film because there is no such thing as perfection. There is never going to be perfect conditions. And if I keep waiting for my neighbors to not be mowing their lawn, which they're doing right now, somebody is always literally around the clock doing some form of lawn care. I kid you not. Um, any time of day. So I, I, I can't get around it. I'm afraid <laughs> I would literally be filming at like four in the morning otherwise. Um, so anyway, I don't really know what this video is going to be. Um, I'm just doing some food prep uh, for the week and you guys are just keeping me company. I'm going to be talking about how my week has been, well, not my week has been because it's only Monday, but how my week was last week and um, just uh, seeing how you guys are and um, just kind of talking and I should have put down some professional paper or reminds me of how they used to do old-fashioned sound effects. I remember when I was younger going to MGM Studios and they probably don't even have this attraction anymore. MGM Studios probably doesn't even exist anymore. But they used to have this attraction where they showed how they did special effects in um, movies and things. And this was before, you know, like, I don't know, this was like early 90s, early to mid 90s. And they would show how they did special effects both back in the day and current. And, you know, how they did like thunder. Obviously in the 90s, they weren't doing like thunder, like with, you know, things like this, but they showed how they did scenes like, um, you know, like uh, disaster scenes and how they mimicked, you know, large buildings with like small scale replicas and things like that. I forget what attraction it was, um, but I loved, I loved that attraction. And there was like audience participation. It was like a really big deal if you got selected, you got to go on this like sound stage and it was super cool. Anyway, um, I loved it. So um, I am the leftover queen. So that's, I don't have really anything interesting uh, food wise. If if, in case you're wondering what I have here, it is um, leftover white rice. I think it's jasmine rice uh, with a lot of hot sauce mixed in, hot sauce, soy sauce, and um, pineapple skin that I put on top. Uh, this came out of the freezer, so it's in the process of thawing. Um, pineapple skin and the tough parts of the pineapple. It's been sitting on top. So that rice has had time to soak in um, all the, it's basically all the parts of the pineapple that you cannot eat, um, like that you can't 
chew and you know actually your body can't um, your digestive system can't you know break down on its own um, uh, you could certainly break it down if you were a chicken though do you know that chickens can actually break down stones their digestive systems are strong enough I forget where I read that I think I read it like on the side of a popsicle stick you know how popsicle sticks some have, sometimes have either jokes or or maybe I saw it in the inside of a Snapple top. It was either a Snapple or a Popsicle. Anyway, um, just a bit of trivia for you that uh, chickens can digest uh, stones. They're, it was chickens or turkeys. Maybe it was Thanksgiving trivia. I don't know. Not important. Gosh, I got off on a tangent there. I was talking about MGM sound, sound stages and then I was showing you or telling you about what I have here. Anyway, um, so um, I think I'm gonna take the, the extra bit of, so um, the, the pineapple is actually the pineapple that I grew in my yard because I have tons and tons of pineapple plants and by the time I put this video up, I don't even know if I'll have my pineapple videos up yet, but I have already picked my pineapple harvest for this year, and my pineapple plants only yielded two pineapples this year. Last year, my pineapple plants yielded about six pineapples, and each pineapple each year only fruit fruits about, or only fruits not about, only fruits one pineapple a year, at least mine have, I don't know, I forget what I have read, um, but um, by now uh, my pineapples are mature um, enough to ye all have yielded pineapples by now and I am now planting the third generation tops in my yard. So I am just full up <laughs> pineapple plants. So anyway, um, I think even if I cooked, I don't really want to mix this in because I don't want to have to pick it out, pick them out when I'm eating it all. And I think that even if I cooked it down, it would still be too tough for me. I know that there is this pineapple skin drink that you can make in your blender or food processor where you can include all the tough parts, you know, the skin and, you know, all the pieces that have those, the eyes. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if they're actually called eyes, but the circular parts that are real sharp, you know, that you want to avoid. Anyway, I don't know, the hot sauce, since it's been sitting in hot sauce, these pieces are kind of a lot softer now but those sharp eyes are still pretty jabby so I think I'm gonna still take it out. I hope it absorbs the pineapple essence well enough though. Well I can oh well, I can still I can smell it really well. All I smell is delicious hot sauce right now. Hot sauce is just, it's like that Pavlovian response where you're just like, <sighs> okay, so this rice is not really sufficiently thawed. Sorry for the loud chopping. It's ah, not what I wanted to happen. Heat when rice. It's flung everywhere when it's not 
nice and broad. I'm very glad I did the four set to grab that table mat. And I should have pulled paper towels for me. Really don't like using paper towels. I'm really stingy with my paper towels. My goal is to mix the rice with some of my leftover veggies and some of my leftover egg. So I have a veggie egg fried rice, sort of. So I have carrots and basically I ate all my broccoli already and so it's basically carrots. <laughs> And I have more carrots in another bowl there, but so I don't mind using the. Uh, I don't know if I wanted to use put all the carrots actually. No, I didn't. I'm gonna change my mind now. Actually, sorry. <clears throat> actually, I'll just use this bowl. No. I don't mean to be so indecisive, and I'm not even carrying on the conversation with you. I guess it doesn't really matter, though. You are here. I can always edit this part out. The indecision. The indecision. Speaking of the 90s, were we speaking of the 90s? Yes, when we were talking about an MGM, we were certainly speaking of the 90s. Um. Oh, and they had the Indiana Jones attraction, the boulder. In the comments below, tell me, you guys, tell me how many of you actually remember MGM Studios. And if you know, tell me if MGM Studios still exists. I haven't been to Orlando or Disney or any of the attractions, Universal Studios, any of that stuff in a really long time. The last time I was at Orlando, I actually visited Orlando and any of the Disney theme parks wasn't even to visit a Disney theme park. It was to run in one of the Disney sponsored races back when I still ran. And I don't even run anymore. I haven't run in years. Um, it was when I was participating in uh, the Disney Princess Half Marathon. And I have run in the Disney Princess Half Marathon a couple of times. It's, you know, Disney sponsored races are very fun. You run through the parks, but it's expensive to... Races are expensive, you know, Anyway, the entry fees are expensive, um, but Disney is especially expensive, es especially expensive. I hope I didn't say especially. <laughs> um, especially expensive because um, it's Disney and they are like that. Um, but um, on top of that, you pay an exorbitant amount of money and you still don't get to enter the theme park even though you've paid this just crazy amount of money so it's kind of like a bit of a rip off i guess what i want to add in addition to this is besides having all kinds of hot sauces, I want to add this Cajun seasoning, this Narlins, Narlins, please don't be angry with me for not saying it correctly, Cajun seasoning, it's so good, 
It's got salt, garlic, paprika, spices, onion, and red pepper. It is so delicious and I just got it everywhere. I knew it was gonna pour out and I just put probably too much in there. That's okay. That's one of my carrots too. The person that is doing their long hair sounds like they're practically in my yard. Anyway, um, so enough talk about Disney, um, although feel free to tell me comments about your last experience with Disney, whether you think Disney is a ripoff or not, if you did any, if you've done any of the Disney sponsored races, and also what I asked about uh, regarding MGM Studios because I'm just really curious about that and um, oh yeah so I was saying speaking of the 90s um, oh and Nickelodeon Studios speaking of the 90s I wonder if Nick does Nickelodeon Studios still exist that was part of um, Universal Studios, and that actually was not specifically what was on my mind today, but I was actually thinking about a TV show that was filmed there, and it was my favorite TV show in, in that, like, 1995, 94, 95, uh, Clarissa Explains It All. You guys remember that show with Melissa Joan Hart as Clarissa? I was obsessed with that show. Obsessed, I tell you. Oh my gosh. I wanted to be her so badly. I thought she had the coolest clothes. I was obsessed with her clothes to the point that I would, um, Obviously, this was before like DVDs, um, so we had a VCR, and I would wait uh, for Snick, Saturday Night Nick, because um, new episodes of Clarissa Explains It All came on Saturday night at, I think it was 8, after Roundhouse, either before or after Roundhouse. It was Clarissa Explains It All, then Roundhouse and like Ren and Stimpy or some, or Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark was last. Cause obviously, you know, it was a scary one. Um, was Welcome Freshman part of that? Or maybe Welcome Freshman was like, like part of a weekend thing. Like, I mean like, weekend in the morning I'm trying to think I don't know anyway um, but I do know it was like roundhouse and then Clarice explains it all roundhouse this is roundhouse roundhouse was sort of like the Saturday night the answer the teenage answer to Saturday Night Live now that I think about it. I never thought about it in that way though because I wasn't like aware of Saturday Night Live. At least that's my interpretation of it. Frozen carrot sticks. Um, I'm gonna set those aside for now. Ooh. Um, but anyway, so I was so obsessed with Clarissa's um, wardrobe the character Clarissa, obviously, if she was not a real person, duh, um, that I would tape all the shows and, um, oh, and also the way her room was set up. Her room was so freaking cool and it was so big. I was so jealous of it. And she had a bay window. Oh my gosh. 
I was obsessed. So many characters, if you watch so many um, like tween shows, all the cool girls have bay windows. They do watch. It's like a thing. Um, the Torkelsons, like that wasn't on Nickelodeon. I don't know what channel that was on, but the girl, she talked to the man in the moon, um, Dorothy Jane. She had a bay window too. Not a Nickelodeon show. I digress. We're talking about Clarissa and her cool clothes. So, um, Clarissa and her, she, she had funky, cool clothes. She had, I mean, everything that she wore is like super, is like totally super trendy now. It would, her clothing would totally fly now. Um, Doc Martens, um, you know, spandex, um, leggings, like funky printed, um, leggings underneath, like, um, kind of like flowy tops, but like layers, like with different patterns and just oh, so cool. She was so cool. I mean, just nineties, 90s fashion just very retro but obviously it wasn't retro because it was like in fashion then but it was like what was very very cool back then oh my gosh she was so cool but anyway i was so obsessed so i would um i would wait with our vcr and i would tape the shows and then um i would audit them i mean i would audit the show as i was watching it but i would audit audit the shows after I would do like a, a post-mortem on the show basically and um, inventory you know how I had like a notebook and I would inventory um, each it's very it was very aspy of me <laughs> um, and now that I you know I think about it like I did like a lot of things like that you know growing up um, with like notebooks and things um, taking in and I still do to this day I, I'm a big fan of notebooks and like taking inventory of specific things um, I really like knowing specifically how many things I have of you know and oops, like details on things um, I, I take like a lot of pleasure in in knowing that um not like in a miserly way but just like uh, I, I just like to know like details and specifications about things um anyway so I would like detail and like write down every last like I would write down all the details of her outfits um you know, like down to the last accessory. And her outfits were always very stylized and accessorized. And oh, I would also write um, down how her hair was styled as well, because her hairstyles always changed too. Her hair accessories always changed. And I was so jealous of her bangs. She had this great straight hair um, which I do not have. I have this like in between hair. I have so far, I have not worn my hair. I like hardly ever wear my hair down. I have really long hair. Um, but I hate wearing it down because it is so annoying, it bothers me a lot. So I always wear it in a bun. Um, but I have like in between hair, it's sort of like wavy. Um, like beachy wavy but to me it's like annoying it like feels like it's like sort of like almost cramped where it's like like moments after you brush it if you try to put your fingers through it it feels tangly again <laughs> you know what I'm saying um, it's not curly it's not straight it's just like in between and annoying um, 
but also if you tried to curl it, it wouldn't be able to hold a curl. Very annoying. So, um, oh, and this is very, what I'm adding right now is um, uh, carrots that are cut a different way and um, I thought these were soybeans, but these are lima beans and these are not, these particular vegetables are not my leftovers, but these are leftovers that my mom had brought over from her place earlier today. My mom came and visited me today. So that was nice of her. It actually works out because it's like the exact same type of veggies that I wanted to use. I'm making like a little rice and veggie parfait in here almost. Uh, oh, I didn't even add the egg. Basically, I guess I just didn't need it. Maybe I can just add the egg to whatever rice is left over. Oh, there's a piece of pineapple that I forgot about in here. It wiggled down to the bottom. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I idolized besides Clarissa. Oh my gosh, I seriously, oh, her hair, so her hair was blonde, which I envied also because, you know, I was a brunette and I just thought like blondes were superior and maybe you agree. Um, my mom is a blonde and um, I just, I don't know, it just always made me feel bad that I wasn't blonde. My mom. Uh, when she was younger, she was um, like this, you know, toe-headed child, you know, almost white hair. And I, I just always, you know, had like mouse brown hair and just kind of me, you know. And I always felt like my mom always paid like super special attention to my blonde-headed friends. I had a best friend. Um, named Sarah um, through a lot of my growing up years and my mom loved her like she had blonde hair blue eyes and my mom always used to say um, and she was really pretty too like all the boys loved her she was like this small little petite um, Girl. she had big boobs like a tiny waist and she was like really short so like diminutive so like guys towered over her and I've always been like tall like I grew up um, tall and like early and then I just you know I grew up to my like final height um, in like I don't know seventh grade <laughs> you know and I was done growing you know so I like was a monster then and you know obviously I'm not a monster now but you get that in your head and it just sticks with you you know anyway so um, you know my mom always used to say um, that Sarah looked like I'm squeezing and now the pineapple's thawed now I'm just squeezing pineapple juice in into the top of this um, my mom always used to say, oh my gosh, Sarah looks so much like um, Heather Graham. And Sarah did have a certain likeness to Heather Graham. My mom used to say it so much every single time she saw her. She, I mean, excessively, excessively. And when you already have this idea in your head that you are less than it wasn't our relationship wasn't even it wasn't even about like the the blonde hair thing i'll tell you more about that another time i don't want to talk about that right now definitely not that is a story time for another day my gloves are really oily and because I got butter and hot sauce all over them and I 
I see like a, a hair on the tabletop that is really bothering me. So I want to wipe that up and see. I have another pair of gloves underneath. It's like magic. Whoa, clean gloves. You didn't see that coming, did ya? You like my cup? Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Very nice. I don't know where this mug came from, but it's a really nice mug. I mean, my mom brought it over. This is, I don't know. This is probably something like my grandma bought or something. And gave as a gift. All right, I got the offensive hair. Sorry for talking about hair and food, but that ugh, I know technically hair in food is not like there's no bacteria or whatever especially if it's your own, <laughs> but it just gives me the willies, which is, an, this is another reason why I keep my hair up all the time, because my hair, I would, I would be finding like long strands of hair in my food, otherwise I'd be eating hair, probably. <laughs> Let's see what's in this. Oh, there's the egg, and it was frozen, so now it's like kind of a soupy mess here. I'm going to stir it, and this egg had, also had hot sauce in it. So freezing eggs, oh that's right, this was egg, yeah, with oil, so that's why it's so cooked with oil. I used to be afraid of cooking with fat. That is something, one of the challenges for me that I'm really proud of myself for moving past or working on moving past. And I'll talk about that more in another video. But not today, because I don't feel like it. It's too, no pun intended, it's too heavy for today's video. Last week was really stressful um, for a bunch of reasons. I do twice a week therapy, one with my primary therapist, and I may have already mentioned this before in some of my other videos, one with my primary therapist and one with my group, ther group therapy, and they're both, um, um, one is done through this, um, program called Zoom. My group therapy is, gone, is is done through a HIPAA compliant program called Zoom. And um, then, um, so they're done remotely. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and the challenges that I was assigned to do, 
therapy, therapeutic challenges were really tough. I guess that's why they're called challenges. And Um, but anyway, obviously my nerves were extremely fr frazzled because I um, dropped, my entire house is tile floors, and I dropped a mason jar, like a full-size mason jar, glass, obviously, um, that had liquid in it on the tile floor um, from a height of three feet like knocked it off a, a table, I guess. A table that's lower, slightly lower than this, I guess. Um, and a, it, a, a, um, it literally shattered everywhere. Just shards of glass everywhere. And f like just, <sighs> I will, I will be picking up, I mean, I spent so long picking up these tiny little slivers. I, I feel like I'm still, I will be, I will move from this, I will, I know for a fact that I, I will be picking up glass for the rest of my life because no matter what, it's like once you, once you break something, you will go like almost a whole year and then for some reason you'll be like on the floor picking something else up and then you'll see another shard like just in a far off corner or you'll move a piece of furniture and then there will be another shard <laughs> because literally I mean they just you know but um what I'm most concerned about because I I don't walk barefoot in my house because it's tile floors, obviously. Um, well, maybe not obvious to everyone because I don't know what your personal preference is for footwear indoors, but um, at, for my dog, I don't want her little paws cut up. Um, and she's just a little puppy, so she doesn't have super rough paws like some you know, the bigger dogs have, you know, really rough paws. Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm almost finished here. This video has kind of been long.